All right, guys, we got a new desk setup behind us. The Apple Studio Display with a Mac Studio. Starting with the Mac Studio, I was previously working on a 2020 M1 MacBook Air, and it surprisingly held its own for a really long time with the footage out of the Sony a7 IV that I shoot on. The MacBook Air started to bog down to the point where I actually ran out of system memory and internal SSD space, oddly enough. So let's get into what spec of Mac Studio I picked. What spec of Mac Studio did I pick? So I ended up going with the M2 Max Mac Studio with the baseline 32 gigabytes of memory. And the only upgrade I did was a one terabyte internal SSD. I watched a few videos on YouTube and read a lot about the Mac Studio online with a lot of recommendations to upgrade the memory so you're future proofed. Get the better processor, get the M2 Ultra. It's great, it'll be future proofed. The reality of my situation is future proof isn't really a thing. I bought the spec of a computer that was the most affordable and had the right amount of horsepower to handle what I need to do, which is editing photos and videos. And then of course, all the other light duty work, email, web browsing, YouTube, etc. I don't need 64. I don't need 96 gigabytes of RAM. I definitely don't need to be having multiple streams of 8K video running. I don't have anything to shoot on 8K. So we're talking, you know, normal H.264 or H.265 4K video files for the most part and shoot a variety of 24 to 60 frames per second, like I said before. So I don't need the top of the line Mac Studio. I bought what was reasonable for me. And so far it's been a powerhouse. It's a huge upgrade even over the M1 MacBook Air. I don't have to do optimized media in Final Cut anymore. I can edit the normal 4K video files straight out of the camera. There's no stuttering, there's no lag. Exporting videos seems faster. I haven't timed it, but it seems like it breezes through exports. Whereas with a longer video on the MacBook Air, you know, I know I could click the export button, kind of get up and walk away, do something else, come back and it would be ready for me. The Mac Studio seems to be eating these video files for breakfast and enjoys every second of it. It runs quiet, it doesn't run hot, and it's matching in aesthetic to the Apple Studio display. So Bill, why did you pick an Apple Studio display? There's a bunch of different cheaper options out there. You could have gone ultra wide. You could have gone with any number of different options. And I pondered this for a while. I had a 32 inch 4K LG panel. It was a pretty budget 4K monitor. Colors weren't very great. And the specs of the monitor also weren't very great. And I had that monitor on an arm that I realized I never really used. I used monitor arms in the past to set the height. I am six foot tall, so when I sit at a desk, a typical monitor stand is too low for me and I need to raise it up to get the monitor at the proper height for me. So, I got the studio display on discount from a friend who works at Apple and I bought the height adjustable stand version. So price wasn't my biggest factor here in decision points. I did look at 5K by 2K ultra wide panels from companies like LG. I looked at the Alienware 34 inch ultra wide gaming monitor, and I ended up settling on the studio display, partly because of the 5K resolution, and that 5K resolution scales properly in Mac OS. I'm not having any issues so far with the size of the monitor. I did come from a 32 inch, like I said, it's a 27 inch screen. I thought that might be a little bit too small for a single monitor setup, but it turns out you get used to what you have. And there's still plenty of space in Final Cut Pro for me. I do minimize some of the sidebars now uh, for things like color grading to get a little more space. Uh, viewing the footage. But overall, this thing is amazing. 
The unboxing experience was out of this world. I'd almost pay the money again for the monitor just to do the unboxing over. The build quality is great. It's all metal. The speakers sound awesome as well. I had previously two HomePod minis set up in the office and I have not actually set them back up yet because the speakers in the display sound so good. And I opted for the standard glass, not the nano texture. At first, I was a little bit skeptical, but the glossy finish makes the viewing experience great. Yes, reflections are worse than a typical matte anti-reflective coating or the nano texture glass. But it's totally manageable. I have windows off to my left here and I have a big light in the room off to my right and only certain angles do those things bother me and the picture on this monitor is absolutely incredible. So in 2023 if you're in the market for a new Mac computer and maybe a new display to go with it I can't say enough good things about these two paired together. Obviously, they both have studio in the name. They were meant to go together, and they go together great. They look great on the desk. They function great together. Single Thunderbolt cable between the two of them. The Mac Studio has plenty of I.O. on the front and the back of it. And my favorite thing about the Mac Studio might be the built-in SD card reader. My dongle life is almost over. <laughs> I still have my SD card reader dongle that's USB-C from Apple to plug in. I do have, you know, cameras with multiple cards and I take multiple cameras different places or if I have a drone out. It's nice to be able to sync everything up. You have more than one card. You can throw more than one card at this thing. Copy everything to whatever drive you're going to be editing on and it's just a seamless experience. And that's kind of the crux of the Apple way at this point is a seamless experience. Everything you get, you know what you're getting. Out of the box, it just works. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it, and it works well. So just be mindful as you watch reviewers who were maybe sent these computers by Apple in a certain spec. You'll notice a lot of them out there with significant amounts of RAM and significantly expensive upgrades. So be mindful of what you actually need. And I would caution you to not buy more than you need. We saw this huge leap from Intel Max, which were very good performers. And we saw a huge leap up to Apple Silicon. And now we get to sit here and watch the continuous improvement that Apple does so well year over year. M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, M1 Ultra, M2, the same thing and looking forward to M3 and M4 and beyond. So buy what you need now. Don't overbuy. There will be a point in the future where your machine will be obsolete and you'll want something different anyways. So save the money, enjoy your tech. With that, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.